Hey squad, welcome back for another skill. Today we are going to be look at, looking at different maps and how we can work out the scale of one map based on the scale of another map. Yeah, so a lot of times, uh, this is actually one of my absolute favorite questions to do. I don't really know why, I just really enjoy the process of figuring it out. But every two or three years-ish, a question pops up that gives you a map and a usually a satellite photo of the thing that is being that is shown on the map. And you have to figure out the scale of the satellite photo, which will not have a scale on it, given the scale of the map. So Which ha will have a scale. Which will have a scale. So we're using that scale, we're looking at information that's similar on the two, and we are working it out from there. A few steps to follow, and we will show you how mm. to do it. So we're gonna figure out how to calculate the scale of, of the map. What's sad is he's, he's really proud of this. It's a scale. Really proud. 10 minutes, yeah. 15 hey. minutes of, Find of out finding. Scale. scale. Scale of a map. Okay guys, so plan for this video, I'm gonna quickly talk through how you might do a skill like this. And then Cizio is gonna take you through a specific HSC example from a 2018 HSC paper. Shout out to the HSC class of 2018. I hope you're doing well, wherever you are in life. Great kids in One of them just became a teacher today from my class. Proud. So proud. proud. So proud. So uh, what you're gonna get given in a question like this is two sources, could be two photos, could be two maps, map and a photo. Uh, what you're always gonna get though is one of those sources will have no scale and one of them will have a very clear scale and we need that scale to work out the other scale. All right, so you can see we've got this map here clearly labeled with a scale at the bottom. There we go, one, one to 25,000. 25, now on the corresponding photo, and you'll notice it is the same bit of the world. See this river that runs along is the same river in the satellite photo, but clearly marked scale on the on the map, no scale at all on the photo. How do we figure out the scale of the photo when there's no scale of the photo? So we need to really do two things here. The first thing we need to do is to find a common feature. This could be an island, it could be a bend in a river, uh, it could be a peninsula. You need to find something that is identifiable on both sources that you can easily measure. In uh, one of the papers we often use, which is actually a trial slash year 11 paper, there is a long skinny island, which is perfect for measurement because it's like bang on 10 centimeters in one of the things. But an easily measured common feature is, is what you need. Exactly. We then need to use our rule that we talked about in another video, which is that small scale equals small detail, but a large number on your right hand side of the ratio, mm -hmm. or large scale equals large detail, and a smaller number on the right hand side of your ratio. Yeah. So what you're gonna do is measure your two features, and let's say on the photograph that does not have a scale, it's half the size. So it's showing half the detail, so smaller detail. The ratio number is going to be twice as big, so you're going to double it. Mm. So it's much easier, I think, to understand this with an example. So if that sounded a little bit confusing, just stick with us because you can get it, I promise. Everything will soon become clear. All right, All right let's I have a look. This. Okay, thank you very much, Samantha. Now, as she just said, we have our both of our sources here, our map with the scale, 1 to 25,000, and our aerial photograph showing no scale at all, and we're figuring out what it is. So the first step that uh, we like to do is to, before we find a common feature and do any calculations, just which is the biggest scale and which is the smallest scale here? Which is the most zoomed out? Which is the least the detail? So you can see that this source, right? The, 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 the river is, you can only, you only see a, it's more zoomed in. You can't see as much of the river. You can see individual, you know, the, the contours of the mountains and stuff. Whereas this one, you got more river for right to left kind of thing, and everything looks a bit smaller. This one is more zoomed in. There's more detail, big detail, big scale, smaller detail, small scale. So source D here is a bigger scale than source E. So that's the first thing we need to know. Map is a bigger scale than photo. Right, so what does that mean for our number here? We've got scale one to 25,000. Well, a smaller scale will have a larger number, right? So this scale here is gonna be one to something that is bigger than 25,000. So we just need to figure out how much bigger than 25,000 should it be. All right, now that we have that in mind, we get a ruler. You need a ruler, you can't eyeball this, you have to measure it, and we find a common feature. 
The biggest common feature that jumps out to me is this river that meanders straight through the middle of the map, particularly this meander of the river here, this big sort of horseshoe shape. You can see it is clearly in the middle of this map and clearly in the centre of the photo. And given the measurements you're about to see, I think the writers of the HSC actually kind of designed it so you would use that exact feature to do this. So let's have a look. First, we go to a map that we know the scale of. We find the middle of this meander, we put our ruler, and we can see that it's exactly one centimetre between those two parts of the river. One centimetre, done. You can even write it on there if you wanted to, not necessary. We go over to the same meander now, we put our ruler down and we see that it is half, half of a centimetre, exactly half a centimetre in fact. So that means we've already, we already know that that is the uh, smaller scale, so it must be a bigger number. And we know that that distance is twice that distance, which means that scale must be twice as large as that, which means we just have to double the number. 1 to 50, 1 to 25,000 becomes 1 to 50,000, and we have our scale of our map. Pen drop. Pen drop. Thanks very much, TS Squad. Thanks so much for joining us today. I hope you worked out that you don't need one of these uh, to figure out the scale of a map. You just need another map with a scale. It's, one not scale. About, it's not about need, it's about want. And who doesn't want a good scale? If you would like to get more geo content, check us out on Instagram at geography explain, at geography underscore explain underscore online. Make sure you Hashtag subscribe, something. tell your teachers about us, tell your friends, have a viewing party. Is that a thing? Have a, have a land party where geography explain online, the game is not a thing that exists yet, but who knows? Hey, Rubbing, someone's doing their... Rubbing streams, maybe. <laughs> We will see you soon with another video, GS Squad. Remember, if you have a bit of content from a syllabus that you've looked at or a skill that you've done in class and you would like us to cover it uh, because you didn't quite get it or whatever, you just like our take on it, please request them in the comment bit, like down Our hot takes on geo skills. Yeah, feel free to ask questions and give us ideas for, for videos or, or skills that, or content we might look at because we'd be happy to do that. All see right. you later, guys. Have a good one.